G'day friends and welcome to another one of my videos. Today I'll be taking you through a tutorial on how to put together those shots you took in panorama mode in your DJI Mavic Air. We're going to create them into a sphere so we can post it on Facebook and wow your friends. So if you want to know how to do that, well then stick around. Okay, thanks for joining me again. So today we're going to be doing a 360 degree workflow from images taken from the DJI drone. And I'm going to take you through the creation of the stitching of the actual images and then how to inject the right uh, metadata in order for it to be displayed as 360 in places such as Facebook. So on my desktop, I've created a folder that I've called DJI Air Pano. And inside that folder, I have a folder called JPEG. And I've copied all the images that I took in the drone. And they're all here in number order. So I've got 25 images. They all comprise of different, um, I guess, um, parts of the uh, sphere uh, of photography. And we're going to uh, stitch them together. So the software we'll be using is DJI Media Maker. Now DJI Media Maker can be downloaded from the DJI website and I will put a link to the actual software down below. It is a very easy software to use. Uh, it's just a matter of uh, dragging and dropping the folder, like my JPEG folder, straight into the drag your folder here icon, just like this. Now, when you drop it, you'll get this message because it doesn't know what to do with the photos. So all it's telling you is to choose what type of mode it is. And here, obviously, you've got 180 degree and 360. This particular one is 360 degree panorama. So we're going to choose that one. And, um, it also, and that message won't go away until uh, we run the process. But open up the folder button and then you can see that you can change where we are saving uh, our file. Now I'm saving it back in the same DJI Air Pano folder and I'm going to name it DJI Air Pano Stitch and we'll hit save. Okay, now that we've changed the name we're ready to hit the start button and then what will happen is it'll start creating this uh, JPEG for you, which is the stitching of all the images together. So it tells you what you're doing, a 360 degree panorama, how long it's going to take. So that countdown gives you an idea. And then you can uh, stop the process if you want to. Now you can drag other folders in here and they will be represented uh, down below. So it can do batch processing as well. So depending on how fast your computer is, is how long this will take. Okay, so when the process is done, you'll get the little symbol uh, on the screen there that'll tell you it's complete. And um, you can now clear that message and you're ready to start again. Uh, you can also open the file right from here, but it will take you to the folder where we told it to save. And here it is. So we've got the DJI Pano Stitch, but we'll hit open and it'll open in native um, um, viewer on Windows. And notice how you've got these dimensions. Oh, not now, Casey. I'll see what you're up to later on. But notice how the, 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 the actual picture is all framed uh, and uh, it's got a bit of cropping on the top. And we'll be talking about how to correct this uh, pretty soon. But this is the image that it actually stitched together for us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually show you another piece of software that is really helpful uh, with my um, process. It's another free piece of software that's made by Rico. It's called the Rico Theta uh, S software. And, and I will also place a link uh, down below. Now, this particular software is really helpful because it allows me to view the quality of the images on the fly. So I'm going to drag in my picture straight into the center. And what it does, it actually puts it together 
because it assumes that it is a spherical image. And here it is. Now I'm going to full screen it. And then you'll be able to see that nice quality detail uh, from the actual image that we captured. But there it is. It's me down the bottom as a drone flies in the air. And look at the quality of the base. It's actually quite nice. But if we scroll to the top, you'll see that this is uh, anomaly. And, uh, and it's because uh, we don't have a complete um, resolution. So it's actually rendering uh, this sphere as best as it can. Let's have a look at the properties of this actual image and so we can get some insight into why it's looking like that. So we're going to go into the properties of the file and then have a look at the dimensions, 18,832 by 6,760. Now the rule uh, for equi uh, rectangular um, spherical photos is that they must, must be in the ratio of two to one. So for this to be correct or for it to look correct, it needs to be 18,832 by 9,416. Now if that width and uh, height was um, two by one, then you wouldn't get that aberra aberration right there. So we need to correct the dimensions um, of this particular image in order for it to look a little bit better. So the only way we could do that um, is through Photoshop. Now, for those of you who don't have Photoshop, um, I do not have an alternative uh, software that can do this. But if you know of another one, uh, let me know. Uh, and then on the comments below so we can actually tell everyone. Okay, so now that we've launched Photoshop, um, it's opening up the picture. And as, I, as you can see, um, it is the same image, um, but it's in the ratio uh, that won't be compliant with our spherical image. So we go to image and then we go to canvas size. And then we will increase the actual height of this picture by uh, that calculation we had before. So once again, 18, 832 divided by two will give you the ratio, so 9416. So in the height box, we will put in 9416, and we'll make sure that the uh, it expands the canvas in the right direction. So we'll click on that button. And then we will hit OK. So what we have done here is created a black bar on the top because the canvas is extended. It just happens to be the black color. But what we want to do, obviously, is uh, have some um, visuals in there because if not, it's actually going to create a big black circle in the sky of this sphere. So to actually correct this, uh, we're going to use a feature in Photoshop, which is one of the most brilliant things uh, Photoshop brings to us. And it's really easy to use. So we're going to click on the black and we're going to select it using our magic wand and then it's really easy we hit the delete button and this particular uh, window comes up it's content aware opacity 100 percent you hit ok and then what uh, photoshop does it starts creating or auto generating um, the content within that black box or that area we're clearing and obviously it takes into consideration all the surrounding areas and it does a wonderful job most of the time to actually uh, fix your images. So as this progresses, it starts um, generating uh, the content and in a couple of seconds, we'll see what it actually looks like. And there it is. Now look at that. It even simulated the top of the trees. Now it doesn't get any better than that. So now our equi-rectangular image uh, will be improved. So you won't have this sort of like teardrop uh, effect because uh, what we need is a proper sphere. So I'm going to close this application down. So one of the things that we have to do, though, um, is we have to make sure that the image is not too big because obviously by adding additional uh, content to this image is just going to make the image much bigger. Now there is a restriction of how big the image is that you load into Facebook. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the image size to something that can be used more readily in Facebook.
So the standard uh, image size that Facebook normally uses is um, a width of 6,000 pixels and a height of 3,000 pixels. So that is done automatically because our ratio now is 2 to 1. So we hit OK. And uh, there it is. So obviously it's shrunk that a little bit, less pixels, but the quality is still there. It's a reasonably good image. Um, and then now we're going to go File, and we're going to Save As. And we're just going to change the name of this particular file from DJI Pano Stitch to DJI Air Pano Stitch 6000 by 3000. And we're going to save that guy. And maximum as possible. And it is quite quick now. So what do we have now? So we have our new image. <clears throat> Obviously, it's a little bit uh, taller because the ratio has changed. We're going to open it up in the Ricoh Theta app just to check it out, check out the quality to make sure that we um, got a nicer image. And immediately you can see the big difference. It is actually rendered um, a lot more um, round or spherical, and it just looks so much better. And um, you can uh, notice that you don't have that teardrop effect anymore because it's a lot more spherical than what it used to be. And it's just more appealing. Okay, so now we're ready to load this image into Facebook. So we're going to share a photo. And we are going to uh, upload a photo and we are going to pick the one that we've just edited. Hit the open button. And there's a very quick sign to let you know if this is going to work or not, um, because um, there's a little icon that's currently missing on this page that actually tells you straight away whether this is a spherical image or not. Now, in the middle of this circle, there should be an icon there that tells you this. So now, obviously, this hasn't worked because there is something missing. And that uh, has a lot to do with metadata. Now, the metadata for these images, uh, can some of it can be seen in the properties of the actual image in the details tab. So if you scroll down to the camera, you'll notice that there's very little information there. Now, in order for um, us to have a properly formatted equirectangular photo, we need some metadata. The good thing about it is that the Rico Theta app does this automatically for us. Now, we could have done it before, but I wanted to take you through the process of understanding why your photo doesn't work when you load it into Facebook. So once again, same image, but we're going to do one extra step. We're going to go to File and write with top and bottom correction as a JPEG data with XMP. Now, the XMP code is the metadata that is important. So notice an, this is an extension at the end of our file name. And we're going to hit save and it's going to write it uh, as a new file into our folder. So now what we've done is we've created an image with the metadata injected that hopefully um, Facebook will detect automatically. So um, let's give that a go again. So share a photo, upload photos and videos, pick the one with the XMP um, data in it. And notice now it's got Camera Maker, Rico. Now, obviously, because I'm using that software, that's what's been injected. And have a look in the middle here. It already has that icon that's telling you that this is a spherical image. So we won't touch it. We'll leave it alone, uh, let it uh, completely load, and um, we'll do, do the next step. So once this image is um, fully uh, adjusted, we have the ability to actually um, edit the picture. So here the little, the little paintbrush, click on that, edit 360 settings. Now this is really cool because what it allows you to do is to pick the starting position when someone views this spherical picture for the first time. So let's, let's book it on the subject. You can zoom it in, you can zoom it out, uh, depending on what you, know, you want to concentrate on. So I think this one's okay. We'll leave me in the bottom and then we'll hit the save button. Then obviously too, you want to write a little message about what this is about. So let's say uh, we're going to type right here, uh, Mavic, 
Air 360. And uh, we are now going to publish this photo. And so that's it. That's how easy that is. So those are the steps um, to actually generate and load your actual 360 degree photo. It's all about uh, correcting the image so you can have the right ratio of two to one. And then remember to actually inject the metadata so Facebook can actually detect it as a 360 image. And then you have it. You know, you got the full size image. Uh, you can scroll around with it and you can see all the fine detail uh, from Facebook and you are ready to rock and roll. So that is it. And there you have it friends, a beautifully stitched 360 degree panorama picture on your Facebook profile. Your friends are going to be so envious and they're going to be wondering how you did it. If you like this video, press the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Your support does count and I really appreciate it. And until next time, ciao for now.